Brian Stiles, and uh, I'm a longtime friend of Car Show Television. Uh, today we're up here in uh, Winter Park, Florida, at the Concorde d'Elegance. And with me today, we brought what I guess can best be described as the world's rarest production car. It's the one and only 1967 Shelby GT500 convertible. Well, this car was actually ordered August 9th, 1966, about one week prior to Mustang production beginning at Ford San Jose plant. It was finally delivered November 21st, 1966. However, in between that time, Ford told Carroll Shelby that he could not introduce a convertible in the 67 model year. So unfortunately, or fortunately, only one was built. Once it arrived at Shelby American, Carroll Shelby took it on as his personal car. There was nothing else to do with it. So as Carroll Shelby's personal driver, it got loaned to his friends, celebrities, employees, and visiting Ford executives. After about four months of being his personal driver, the car was repurposed into how you see it today. It became one of two 1968 styling prototypes that were used to photograph and create all the marketing literature and brochure used by the Ford dealers during the launch for the 1968 model line. This car is actually a 67, but it's been disguised as a 68. This car has actually been disguised this way for the last 45 years. It's wearing what looks like 1968 fiberglass, the front end, the hood, and the taillight panel. However, these are actually prototype one-off pieces that were crafted by hand by Ford's go-to skunk workshop, which was Dearborn Steel Tubing. The pieces were fabricated, shipped out to California, and in April of 1967, they were bolted onto this car so the photographing could begin. Between April 67 and July 1967, the car made multiple appearances. It ended up being repainted white because it photographed better in an era of black and white photography. And eventually, when Shelby American shut down operations in California, when Ford bought them out, the car was shipped up to Dearborn and Ford decided to sell it on their B-Lot because it was a standard production line car meeting all safety requirements in 1967. There was no reason to crush the car, so it got sold to a Ford employee. And there it stayed in the Great Lakes area and it was found outside of Chicago back in 1977. We actually acquired this car in 2009 from Dana Meekum. Uh, it ran through his Indy auction, uh, kind of at the low of the market, you might say. And uh, after acquisition, we sent it right off to uh, RNA Motorsports to uh, begin a concourse level restoration. That took about two years, uh, and included in that would be about five years of ongoing research, documenting the car, interviewing former Shelby American employees, finding paperwork, and uh, continuing to just learn the history about this car so that we can take it around, share it, and show it. You know, I don't know if this is a great example of the, the Ford-Shelby relationship. It, it kind of speaks to what was happening back then, which is that Carroll desperately wanted to introduce additional body styles beyond just the fastback that he had been producing since 1965 with the Mustang-based product. In 67, actually in August 66, he ordered the first three big blocks, which were a Car 100, a fastback, Car 131, which was a coupe, and Car 139, which was a convertible. All three cars were ordered identically. Candy apple red, black deluxe interior, automatic air conditioning, and of course a smog system because they were California bound. The coupe unfortunately didn't survive. The fastback is still around today, and the convertible became the only one because Ford did not allow him to produce a convertible in 1967. Despite all of his customers, primarily celebrities, wanting a drop top, Carroll Shelby was having a hard enough time running a company, and so Ford said, just stick with, just stick with the fastback. The convertible, the coupe, it's just asking too much at the time. And as we know, 67 was the end of it for Shelby. Ford took it over going forward.